Alright, this is Superboy 60 by Callum Kazazel and Wallace Gromit. And Superboy has been fired away on top of like a rocket. And the Justice League are there. And you would think that they would be trying to help them out. But they just stood there. They're, they're watching. They might as well have brought some popcorn with them. We start off and Cersei from the Eternals. She shows up at the Justice League's headquarters. And she has got Superboy with her. And you're grabbed instantly by the first page. Because this is a good comic. And Superboy, he has been badly hurt. And nobody knows what's going on. And Cersei, when she touches Superboy's jacket, she has glimpses of the multiverse. Like, she sees different realities. Like, one reality where Santa has become Superman. And then Superboy, he dies. Superboy dies warning the Justice League that blackness is coming. So let's just have a moment's silence now for Superboy. Except not a moment because it weren't a real Superboy. Bet you didn't see that one coming, did ya? The dead Superboy, he comes from the multiverse. He comes from another reality. So the real Superboy and Superman and Wonder Woman... They gan to Project Pegasus, which is a secret government laboratory. They gan there to study the dead Superboy. Uh, Project Pegasus, of course, is part of Superboy's book. And today I'm going to be talking about how Superboy is a successful spin-off book. And this is one of the reasons why. When a book like Superboy or Supergirl or Robin or whatever, well, they are all spin off books, and what they need above all else is their own identity, their own unique take, something that separates it from the book that it is spinning off from. In Superboy's case, he is spinning out of Superman, and this book. This run, it absolutely does everything right in spinning the character off. We have got a focus on Project Pegasus, which was Summit from Superman Mythos, but not Summit major enough in Superman's Mythos that it felt like Superboy, he was just taking it for himself away from Superman. And Project Pegasus in Superboy's book makes absolute sense since Superboy, he was created as a clone of Superman by Project Pegasus. And with Project Pegasus, we've got a whole bunch of supporting characters, a little cast to use. We've got people who work there. We've got established characters like Dubstep here. And Gladiator, the Captain America rip-off character. And Gladiator, he's actually a fairly prominent character in DC history. So Superboy, he has two things that immediately help set it apart from Superman. Uh, besides, besides the title star, of course, that, that is a huge component as well. We're doing stories about youth now. Uh, we're looking at things through the eyes of youth instead of the eyes of Superman and stuff like that. Uh, but we've also got Project Pegasus and we've got a supporting cast. And another thing we have got is full on Jack Quimby style. We're doing the whole crazy science and the big exciting robot monsters and the double page adverts. For Batman Beyond. And Jack Quimby. He always did them. He loved adverts for Batman Beyond. And Jack Quimby. He never actually did Superman. He like never did a proper run on Superman. And Superman's book. Never quite had one of them runs. That's just like. A Jack Quimby love letter. 
So this, it again helps the Jack Quimby style. It helps Superboy carve out its own feel and its own look and its own niche or niche as people who can't say words right say. Uh, Superboy, Superboy's book is running with the big ideas, the high concepts, uh, the crazy science, uh, Project Pegasus. Uh, Project Pegasus was created by Jack Quimby in the seventies, and it was always like it was always like a periphery thing in Superman's comics. And all this stuff that I've listed, it adds up to make the case that this is definitely not just a Superman book or a Superman spin-off book. This is its own thing. The bad news is that this story arc. Spins out of a Martin Quaid story. It spins out of the critically panned and reviled, even by Alec Rose, sequel to Tragic Kingdom. Basically, Martin Quaid, Martin Quaid thinks that he invented the multiverse. And Superboy, he has got a gun into the multiverse to work out what's going on, what's going on with this dead Superboy, what he came back to warn them about. And the only way that they can get enough energy to break the dimensional barriers is with a very convenient nuclear bomb. They're going to send Superboy up in a nuclear bomb. They're going to fire the bomb off up into the sky and Superboy's going to be tied to it and the explosion is meant to be strong enough to throw Superboy into another reality and this page I love this page this is fantastic I love it there's the whole idea that this plan actually might gone wrong or Superboy is just pointlessly killing himself off and this page is Batman and Wonder Woman being really nice to Superboy. Like we'll start at the top. Wonder Woman, she guns. I wish there were somewhere I could go with you, Superboy. And then Superboy, the big flirt that he is, he guns you and me both. Then you go down to the next panel, because that is how you read comics. And he continues, When I get back, I will tell you all about it, okay? And Wonder Woman says, It is a date. And then Batman down here, uh, Well, Superboy, Superboy is panicking that he will screw up, or that he'll do something wrong. And I have said before, Batman... Batman guest appearances in other books are almost always dreadful because Batman is always either written as a massive idiot or he's written as a massive dickhead. But here, he's just written great. He is written really well. He says to Superboy, a character he doesn't really know, he reassures Superboy, he gans, Robin speaks very highly of you, Superboy. You will do fine. Fantastic. I, I love bits like this where characters are just nice to each other. Then we've got this bit up here where Superman says goodbye to Superboy. And, well, Superman, he uses a Cryptonian name that he christened Superboy with. And that would have a much better emotional impact if it wasn't just the issue before this one that Superman had given Superboy that name. So Superboy, he gets fired off on the bomb and then it goes up into the sky and there's a big nuclear explosion and then we cut back to the characters on the ground and they're hoping that it went okay, that the plan worked. And lucky enough, it did work. And Superboy, he is in another reality now. He's in the Batcave and Batman is there. And in this reality, Robin is Superboy. Or Superboy is Robin. 
of both of those things. And the story is to be continued. Two super boys, you have not seen anything yet. This is mostly set up for a storyline, but it does a decent job at it. We have got some nice character moments. Uh, we've got a lot of unique Superboy style, like the big high concept Jack Quimby stuff. And as I said, things like that, it really helps Superboy stand out as its own book rather than just being another Superman family book. This is a fantastic run in general, but I rate this comic a 7 thumbs up.